welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and today I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in the month of May. May was a ginormous reading month for me. I don't really know what happened. <laughs> but I read a ton of books and we have a lot to talk about today. Also, I'll say sorry if it's a little louder today. I have my air running. It is 90 degrees and I don't want to sit in here in a non-air conditioned home sweating like I did all last summer. But also, it is the very last wrap up you're going to see in this house because I'm going to be moving in three weeks now, which is absolutely insane. <laughs> so June is probably not going to be the biggest reading month. It's probably not going to be the most active month for me on my channel just because I'm going to be moving. I'm going to be staying at my mom's house for like a week in between while stuff is being moved so it's gonna be a little bit of a chaotic month so it's good that I got all my reading done in May but yeah say goodbye to this setup because this is the last time you'll see it in a wrap-up format you'll see it in my next couple videos but in a wrap-up format this is the last wrap-up in this house in this state which is just absolutely insane this year flew by but yeah we have so many books to talk about today so let's go ahead and jump on into the book stack I'm gonna do what I did last month because I had a lot of fun with that style of going from lowest rated to highest rated so I'll start with my DNFs and then we'll go from one stars all the way up to five stars because yes we did have both one stars and five stars in this month Starting with the DNFs, I DNFed three books in the month of May. The first one I DNFed was The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. This just didn't end up being what I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a quirkier story. The concept and the synopsis makes it sound like it is this story about this haunted bookstore and this ghost, and it just sounds really quirky and light. But I was really having a lot of trouble getting into the writing style of this one. It was just a very different type of writing style that I'm not really used to. This is a literary fiction novel, and I I don't read as much literary fiction now as I used to so I also just wasn't really in the mood for it as much as I maybe would have been had I picked this up like two years ago so I ended up DNFing this one after about 50 pages I don't think I'm gonna pick it back up I don't think it's gonna be for me even though I've heard really good reviews I just don't think this is gonna be a book that I'm personally going to really enjoy next up we have The Latecomer by Jean Hop Corlitz I picked this one up for the vlog that I did where I was reading thriller arcs this one I DNFed after like 26 pages it was not very far into the story this one also leans more on the literary fiction side. It is a very slow paced, rich, densely written story. And the only reason that I DNF'd it for now is because I would really like to pick up the audiobook for this and this book is not yet out. So I did not have the audiobook available. But once the audiobook comes out, I will reprioritize this on my TBR at some point because I am still interested in the story. It just wasn't something that I wanted to physically read. I really just wanted the audiobook. And then finally, we have The Monster of Ellen Haven by Jennifer Giesbrecht. I picked this one up for the thrill to the weekend reading vlog that I did in my last video. I thought this was going to be more horror. It turns out to be more fantasy. I wasn't really following the story. I wasn't really getting invested in the characters. So even though it's a really short book, I decided to sit it down because I was in a readathon and I didn't want to waste my time reading a book that I wasn't super interested in. So this one, I do not think I'm going to be picking back up. I think I'm just going to go ahead and unhaul it. Now to jump into the books that I did read this month, starting with the one one star read that I had. That was One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle or Surle. I never know how to say this author's name. I was so disappointed in this being a one star. I picked this up during the Thrill to the Weekend readathon. I didn't talk about it much in the reading vlog because it's not a thriller book. I picked it up right on the tail end and I ended up reading it all in one day. I didn't expect to read it so quickly, but I just got through it super quick. It's shorter than I expected. And I had the audiobook, and Lauren Graham narrates the audio book. I love Lauren Graham so I did go through this one really quickly but I did hate it a lot and it was super disappointing because I thought this was going to be a story that I really loved. The concept of this one is that you're following this woman whose mother has recently died from an illness and they were planning to take this vacation together to Italy and then after her mom's death she decides that she still wants to go to Italy and live that vacation out. While she's there she encounters a younger version of her mom through some magical thing that's going on and she gets to spend that time with a younger version of her mom. I thought this was going to be really heartfelt, really emotional. I love stories that incorporate just a little sprinkle of magic. I love mother-daughter stories. I love Italy and the Italian atmosphere. And so I really thought this was going to be like the perfect summer read. I've been saving this for months because I wanted to read it on a sunny day sitting outside, which is what I did. And I hated it. It was so 
bad. What this story turns out to be is mostly just watching this woman cheat on her husband. I feel like the mother was hardly even in the story. You watch this woman after her mother initially dies, she tells her husband that she doesn't know if she can be married to him anymore because her mother was the one love of her life. And so she just doesn't know if she can be with her husband anymore, which in a way I'm like, okay, you're grieving. Maybe that's the thought that you start to have, but how rude to say that to your husband's face, like how traumatizing for him to say that, but you're grieving. So like, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for a bit, but just her actions throughout this whole book, the way she treats her husband, the way she just goes off to Italy, immediately meets another man, spends the whole vacation with another man, has sex with this man. Literally, what are you doing? And then I'm gonna spoil this book because I just don't think you should read it. And so I think you should just hear the spoiler so you know what to expect and just not pick it up anyway. But in case you don't wanna know, I'll put the spoiler bar up here really quickly. But what ends up happening in this story is she has traveled back in time. It takes her the whole freaking book to realize that she's traveled back in time. Like, no shit, you've traveled back in time. You thought you were just encountering this younger version of your mom and that the younger version of your mom had somehow come into the present. In what world does that make sense? It makes no sense. But it takes her until the end of the book to be like, oh my God, wait, I should ask someone what year it is. It's 1992. That's crazy that I've gone back in time. So that annoyed me. And then in the end, her husband just ends up showing up. She somehow has popped back into present time all of a sudden after she's hooked up with this guy and done all these things. Her husband shows up to Italy. He's like, sorry, I shouldn't let you go to Italy by yourself. I really want us to work on our marriage. I know you're grieving right now, but I don't want you to try to leave me. And she's just like, oh yeah, you're right. Gets back with her husband after cheating on him this whole time, all the way to having sex with another man. Says nothing about it. And it's just like, okay, it'll be a happily ever after. And that's the book. I was infuriated. I had such a bad time with this. I was so extra upset because I thought I was going to love it and it was just so not what I thought it was going to be. And I just hated this main character and all the decisions she made. I hated the distraction of that romance element in the story. Like this should have been a mother daughter story and it did not get the chance to be a mother daughter story. And I was so disappointed and I would definitely not recommend picking this one up. I feel really bad too, because I've read from this author before I've read in five years. And I remember reading that years ago and the book was nothing like what I expected it to be. But I remember that I still enjoyed the book and I was still recommending the book. And years later, people talk about it all the time. Like in five years is terrible. It's not what you thought it was gonna be. It was so bad. And I've defended it all these years. I've been like, no, I still really enjoyed it though. And I'm like, would I enjoy that now? Because I had the same experience with this book and I'm so mad about it. So I take back everything I ever said about in five years. I don't know if I would even like that book anymore. And I don't think I'm gonna be picking up from this author again. It was just not a good time. Next, we'll jump into my two star ratings for the month. I had two of them this month. The first one was Magpie by Elizabeth Day. This book was kindly sent to me by the publisher. It just came out at the beginning of May on May 3rd. I believe it was published first in the UK and that this was just recently published in the US. So you may have seen a different cover of this book or you may have heard about it before, but it was just recently published in the US. The concept of this one is you're following this couple who is ready to have a baby. They wanna make some extra money before having the baby. And so they allow this woman to come live in their house and like rent out a room and then she starts getting like a little too invested in them a little too involved in their marriage and it's kind of like a one of those thrillers that sounds like it's going to be an obsession type story thought it sounded really interesting ended up being disappointed in the representation and this one for the most part which is why i ended up not liking it i really don't like when mental health is used as a device in thrillers and when it is portrayed in a bad way that's just something that's personal to me i don't like that so the twist definitely relies on that in this one. It, is it an interesting twist? Is it like clever? Does it catch you by surprise? Yes, but I just don't agree with using those types of twists and thrillers. And so that was disappointing. I feel like a lot of people are going to say this is entertaining and that it really gets you and it's so amazing. It's got a cool plot twist, but at what expense, you know? And so I definitely didn't appreciate that. And that is what ended up giving this a lower rating for me. However, I do think I would pick up from this author again, because overall I thought the writing style was good. I thought the pacing was good, but but I just didn't like the direction that this book decided to go. And so that's why it ended up being a two star for me. I'll also warn you if you're interested in picking this one up still, there is a lot of discussion about infertility and I know that can be triggering to people. So just wanted to let you know about that as well. My other two star rating of the month was Cherish Vera by Bethany C. Morrow. I'm really upset about this one because I've heard this one getting really terrible reviews, but I still wanted to give it a chance because it sounded really interesting to me. And I really thought I could be the one person to actually enjoy this one because sometimes that happens. Sometimes 
sometimes I like the unpopular books, but I totally see what everyone's saying about this one. I also did not enjoy it. I gave it a two star and that was kind of generous. Like it could have been a one star, but what this book does is build such a good, interesting story and then has a really disappointing, unsatisfying ending to it. The writing was really good. I was really interested in the tone and the atmosphere that this author created. I would certainly read from this author again, but the story just ends up falling really flat in my opinion. What this story is about is two girls who are friends, Cherish and Farah. They're both black teenage girls, but Cherish grew up a lot more privileged because she was adopted by a wealthy white family. And so there is this power imbalance between them and Farah gets really close to Cherish and kind of becomes part of the family. And then it's about like the dark sinister things that are going on between them. Kind of hard to talk about without spoiling, but yeah, pretty much the ending just fell pretty flat for me. I see what the author is doing. This is a social horror type of story that reads kind of like a literary suspense in a way, but it just ended up falling pretty flat. I feel like it built up so much anticipation and so much tension and so much suspense and mystery and horror elements. And then the ending of what is explained of what is going on is certainly horrific, but it's just, I wish it would have like really gone somewhere bigger. I wish it would have built up something really dramatic to match the tension of everything that was being built up beforehand. So I see why people aren't enjoying this one. I agree, but I would definitely pick up from this author again because I do think they have potential. I don't know why I said I only had two two star reads because I had four. So I still have two more two stars to go through. <laughs> Next up, we have one that people are going to be super disappointed about. And that is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I read this one in my thriller arc reading vlog. So you can hear my full thoughts and full experience there. I talked extensively about this book because I know so many people are going to be excited for it. And I was giving it a bad review and I wanted people to understand why. I don't want people who are so excited for this to like change their minds and not pick it up just because I didn't like it because you still might like it. This book just heavily involved a lot of sexual violence, which is not something that I like to read a lot of. And the book was like very heavily centered on that. And so I just didn't really mesh with it as well. Uh, I also just didn't really love the writing style in this one. And I also didn't really love In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which was the debut thriller book from this author that a lot of people loved, but I only gave it like a three and a half star. I thought it was just kind of like middle of the road. This one, I would also say is like middle of the road, but I liked it even a little bit less. What the story is about is this woman who is trying to like take down this cult. She is partnering with a true crime podcaster who she knew back in her college days. People in her college town are going missing or ending up dead and she's investigating with him what's going on. Yeah, I really, I talk so much about this in that vlog. So I really just recommend going to that to see my full explanation of why I didn't like it, but it really just boils down to the writing style and the large amount of sexual violence and bad men in this book, which I don't really like to read much about. So I'm looking forward to seeing more people pick up this book and hearing what other people have to say about it. I hope it's better received from a lot of other people because this book was really personal to the author. She has a note about that in the back and how she was worried that it wasn't gonna be well received because of that. And so I am like her worst nightmare of what she thought was gonna happen <laughs> is someone picks this up who doesn't wanna read about this and then they don't like it. So I hope there are people who receive this way better than I did and can get some kind of catharsis out of the story. I definitely think that's possible. It just wasn't my experience with the book. And then the last two star rating that I had was for a short story that I read this month, which was Men, Women, and Chainsaws by Stephen Graham Jones. I hesitate to even really rate it. I would just say like, I didn't really like the short story. I don't know if a two star is exactly what I would call it, but a three star I think of as like middle of the road, four star I liked it, two star I didn't like it, five star I loved it, one star I would not recommend it. So I'm just calling it a two star. It's hard to rate a short story that is like 37 pages long. This is a story about this girl who's getting revenge on her ex-boyfriend. There is like a haunted Camaro situation in it. And it's really hard to say too much more about it because it's a short story. So I don't want to give too much away, but I just didn't really enjoy this one. I didn't really click with it. I was really interested in it because I really prefer Stephen Graham Jones short form horror over his long form novels. So I thought I would really enjoy this one. Also, if you are not aware, Men, Women, and Chainsaws is the name of a book that was published back in the 90s, which was an example examination of gender in the horror film, talking about the final girl trope, talking about why we watch horror films and the feelings we have and why they continue to show certain tropes in certain ways and how we connect to them and all kinds of things about horror films. I read a couple chapters of this book back in my college days when I took a horror film class and I was interested to see what Stephen Graham Jones was going to add to the conversation by writing a short story under the same name, but I didn't really get it. Like, I just feel like I just didn't really get it. And so that's why 
I just didn't really work for me. It was just a two star, but it is only 37 pages. So if you're interested in it, I would say you might as well pick it up. It was only 99 cents on Kindle and it only took about 30 minutes to read. So it's not too much of a waste of time if you end up not liking it. But it does make me a little more hesitant because I've now had five experiences with Stephen Graham Jones works, two short form novellas that I really liked, two long form novels that I didn't like, and then this short story that I also didn't like. And so it's kind of like a hit or miss with me on his writing. I'm really curious how I'll feel about more things that I read from him in the future, but I'm just trying to kind of figure out if his style is for me or if it's not for me. I don't really know, but yeah, that was how I felt about that short story. Next, moving on to my three stars. I had quite a few three star ratings this month. The first one is The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentile. This is a book that I read in my thriller arc video and I ended up feeling like right down the middle of the road with this book. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it. I would say I lean more on not liking it than I do on liking it, but I feel like people will maybe like it. So just kind of slapped a three star rating on it right in the middle. My understanding of what the story was going to be was very different from what it is. I fully expected this to be a locked room murder mystery, which the synopsis makes it sound like it is, but it ends up not being that really at all. It's very, very different from that. This is a metafiction type of story. So what you're reading is a novel that a woman is writing, which is about these characters who are in the Boston Public Library together. A woman screams, ends up dead. That unites them. They go about their lives, continued threats are in their lives, and it's kind of like a runaway train type of story of what goes on with them after that event. But that's a novel being written. And then at the end of every chapter that you're reading of the novel being written, you read a letter that is being written to the novelist from this man who is giving her critiques on the chapters. And so it's interesting if you're interested in like the process of writing stories, the things you have to consider, a lot of discussions around, do you include the pandemic in your story or not? Does that date your story? Or is it weird to not include that? Is it pertinent to define the race of certain characters? If you do, how does that change? change the story and other conversations like that. So if you're interested in that, I think you might like this a little bit more. But for me, I just didn't really feel super engaged in the story. The whole time I really wanted to know what was going to happen in, in the novel that you're reading, but it is difficult when you feel a step removed from it. You're reading a story being written, which I know technically anytime you're reading fiction, it's just a story, but there's something about it being one layer removed that removed me from the story in a way. I didn't feel as connected to it. The story didn't feel fully fleshed out the characters didn't feel fleshed out the mystery didn't feel fleshed out and by the time you get to the end and you discover who the killer is I just didn't really feel super invested in it I didn't really care as much and I really was expecting there to be more tie-in from the other parts of the story where you're reading these letter critiques I thought there was going to be some kind of twist that like pulled those together and there really wasn't there's more that ends up going on in that but it kind of just felt like extra bits added for a subplot that doesn't really ultimately do much much for the greater story. So this one ended up just being a three star for me. I think I would maybe now call it more of a two star reflecting more on it, but I have heard other people are enjoying this one a little bit more than I am. So if you're interested in it, still might be worth checking out, but just know it is not a locked room murder mystery like the synopsis leads you to believe. Next up, we have The Missing by Kirsten Modulin. I read this because it was the buddy read for the Thrill to the Weekend readathon. So I talk about it all in that reading vlog. If you wanna hear my full thoughts there. I listened to this audiobook on Scribd. This is the second book that I have read from this author. And I ended up feeling a bit more positively about this book than a lot of other people did. Many people really, really hated this book and I totally see why. And I totally agree with a lot of the things that people are saying about it when they're like picking apart all the problems with it, the plot holes, things that annoyed them. I totally agree. I think as just like a reading experience for the average person, I call this a three star book. You're following the set of characters who gets stranded on this island together and they're trying to survive. I think it was compelling enough. I think there was enough intrigue developed in the beginning. And I think the plot twist was an interesting, like mind blowing plot twist for the average reader. So I think it's a fine book, but if you read a lot of thrillers, you're probably not gonna love it that much. And if you've read other island thrillers, this is probably gonna be the worst one you read. <laughs> this was like the worst island thriller that I've read. There are certainly others that I recommend above it. So I don't really recommend this 
unless you're like a beginner thriller reader. I feel like that's how Kirsten Modlin is as an author. She writes interesting plot twists, kind of like these popcorn thrillers, the grocery store thrillers, the airplane thrillers that you like pick up, read really quickly, feel a little bit of excitement from the plot twist, but it's not a book that really sticks with you super long. So maybe if you're a beginner in the thriller genre, this could be one that you would pick up. Or if you're trying to look for a book to get a friend into the thriller genre, maybe you should have them try out some of Kirsten Modlin's books. But I don't really think I'm gonna be continuing to read much from this author unless there's something that gets rave reviews. I'm not really interested in further exploring her stuff as a more seasoned thriller reader. <laughs> I'm just not really interested in that style of thrillers right now. So I'm probably not gonna be picking up much more from her. Um, but yeah, overall I thought this was fine. It was like a three-ish star for me. Personally, it was more of a two star, but as a book, I think it's pretty average. So yeah, that's how I felt about that one. Next up, we have The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. I read this for the book troop book club gabby asked me and my friend hannah from hannah's recent reads to be co-hosts for the month of may and so we all read this book and discussed it in a live show so i will link that down below if you want to go check that out and hear all of our full thoughts it was pretty interesting because we all felt different about the book hannah ended up liking it quite a bit i was kind of middle of the road and gabby really didn't like it that much so we have a full spectrum of thoughts if you want to go hear all of our differing opinions on it what this is is a haunted house story you're following this woman named adrian who is in her early 20s she has inherited a haunted house from her great aunt that she doesn't know is haunted but obviously it is and she's just trying to survive and figure out what's going on and how to make all the spooky things stop happening this is a book that is like a personal two star for me it's not something i love but i gave it a three star because i think it is like a three star middle of the road book i feel like this would be a good book for people who are new to the horror genre if you're just trying to get into the horror genre and you want to read something that has some like common horror tropes in it but isn't too very scary then this is definitely one that I would recommend and I feel like that's how people explain a lot of Darcy Coates books to be so similar to how I think of Kirsten Modlin as like a beginner thriller author I think of Darcy Coates as a beginner horror author even though I've only read one of her books I feel like that's probably fair to say this is described as cozy horror that's how a lot of people talk about it because it's like a small town the stakes aren't too high it feels safe reading it you don't really expect the bad guys to win or the good guys to lose you kind of know what you're getting going into it and yeah I felt like it was fine I just wasn't super engaged reading it I just didn't really care too much about the story as I was in it because it's a lot of tropes I've seen before there wasn't anything particularly new being brought to the table in this one but if you are reading your first ever haunted house book then this might be a good place to start and for my last three star I have the stars are not yet bells by Hannah Lilith Asadi this is a book that I read for a weekend reading vlog that I did it was like a cozy rainy weekend reading vlog where I read a couple books so I talk all about this book in that vlog if you want to hear extended thoughts on it. This is a story about a woman who is diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she's having trouble piecing together the mystery of her life. She moved to this island off the coast of Savannah, Georgia with her husband many years ago. He started a business there. The business is now failing. There's been all this like lore about these magical like diamonds or something in the ocean there. When they moved, they moved with this man who came with them and he's no longer there. And she's just like reflecting on her life and trying to piece together how she got to where she is today. It's a really somber book. It feels full of nostalgia. It's really harrowing. It's really beautifully written. So if you appreciate just like really solid writing in a book, this has really, really great writing in it. But ultimately it ended up just being a three star for me because I didn't feel like it did anything particularly special for me. I didn't connect to this book in any particular way. It didn't feel fully complete to me. It's just like a slice of life type story. You're reflecting on this woman's past. It's very beautifully written. It's a good time for an afternoon, but not a book that's gonna stay with me for a super long time. Next up, we have my four star ratings for the month. And the first two that I'm gonna start with are the first two volumes of Heartstopper. I watched Heartstopper this month. I watched and read Heartstopper in that same reading vlog I was just talking about, the cozy weekend reading vlog. So I watched the show first and then I decided to finally pick the books up. And this month I picked up volumes one and two. I still have yet to read three and four, but I ended up rating both of these four stars. I really personally just love the show. I think the show is amazing. I think the actors really brought it to life. It's 
just a perfect show in my opinion like it is absolutely amazing it is one of the best shows ever to exist in this world ever <laughs> it's just so wholesome and sweet and if you don't know what it's about it's about these two boys just falling for each other and one of the boys knows he's gay the other boy thinks he's straight and then he realizes he has feelings for this other boy and so he's really trying to navigate what that means questioning his sexuality trying to understand what it means to fall for a boy and there's just so much great range of representation within the comics and the show people of different race people of different sexualities just bisexual representation so i really highly recommend the show and the comics i know a lot of people read the books first and they attach to the books a lot but because i watch the show first i feel like i attach to that first and the books just don't come to life for me in quite the same way so that's why they end up being four stars for me instead of five stars really what i just love is the show so much and then these are kind of like a little companion for me so i'm hoping to read the other two volumes next month and then i think a fifth one should be coming out at some point i don't really know how many they're supposed to be i'm not as caught up to it as everyone else is but i'm definitely still interested in continuing with the graphic novels and i cannot wait for there to be more seasons of the show they have renewed two more seasons already and i am so excited for it because they are just absolutely perfect my next four star rating was the good lie by a.r torre i read this with my friend jesse from the channel reading with jess she asked me to co-host her book club which is called the sleep and i'm dead book club and this is the book that we decided to read together for that and we both ended up enjoying it quite a bit i think i ended up enjoying it a little bit more than jesse maybe did but i really loved it i'm definitely interested in reading from this author again in the future this is a psychological thriller that is about this serial killer and you're following the perspectives of a psychiatrist and a district attorney and so you get both the psychological part of the investigation into figuring out who a serial killer is and the legal parts of it as well i'm really interested in the psychological stuff behind it so i thought that was really interesting they're coming together and he asks her to help prepare a profile on who the serial killer could be there's a man who is accused but he doesn't believe that to be the right victim and so he wants her to create an unbiased profile to try to determine who the serial killer is and it's very personal to him because his son was one of the victims in the past and so it's very interesting that he's willing to defend this person who's been accused of being the killer i thought it was just really great it's a pretty short thriller just coming over 200 pages it was super fast paced it was really complex i love the way everything weaved together in the end and i was just really impressed with it overall so i'm definitely going to be picking up more from this author i've heard good things about the girl in 6e so i think that's what i'm going to pick up next but if you have any other recommendations definitely let me know down in the comments below because i'm certainly interested to read more from this author oh and i also will be linking the live show that me and jesse did for this book in the description down below as well so if you want to go hear our full thoughts you can check that out as well next up we have you've lost a lot of blood by eric laroca this was my last four star for the month this is a horror novella from the same author of things have gotten worse since we last spoke which i absolutely loved when i read that in the last year or two i can't remember exactly when it was so i was definitely interested to pick up more from this author this is a book that i really did not know what i was getting myself into reading it because the synopsis is super vague i read this book in my thrill to the weekend readathon blog so you can go see my experience with it there if you want to see more of my full thoughts but this is another kind of metafiction type book you're reading a novella that has been published by a character whose diary entries you're also reading and conversations he has with his partner so there's like two separate storylines going on i ended up really enjoying this one gave it four stars the only thing holding me back from a five star was comprehension of like the point of this story i didn't really understand how the two different parts of it came together on a very base level understanding i do i get what happened but i don't understand why the author chose to put it together in this way so i'm really interested in reading more of like author interviews to try to better understand this book but i will definitely be picking up more from this author i just love their writing style it is so gruesome and gory the covers are also amazing all the time and something about their writing style just really hooks you in it really pulls you in i compare it to going down like a rabbit hole on reddit like it just feels like you're reading something you shouldn't be and i feel like that's so effective for horror so i really had a good time with this one i definitely would recommend this one if you like gruesome gory horror and i will definitely be picking up more from this author in the future And then finally, for my one five-star rating for the month, we have Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I was so glad that I enjoyed this one because I read People We Meet on Vacation last summer and I loved that one. But the summer prior, I read Beach Read and I didn't like that one as much. That ended up just being a three-star for me. So I wasn't sure if I was going to love or hate this one. And then I started seeing a lot of negative reviews for it, which made me super nervous. But I ended up really, really loving this one. I also read this one in that cozy weekend reading vlog I did. So you can see my experience with it there if you want. I only read the first half though 
so you can just see my first half experience with this book but what this story is about is you're following this woman who is a i think she's a literary agent and then the guy is an editor they both live and work in new york but she is taking a trip down to this small town in north carolina outside of Asheville with her sister because her sister's getting ready to have her third baby she's exhausted and she just wants to take a trip with her sister to this small town which is connected to them because one of the authors that the main character has worked with before set her book in this town and this was like her breakout book it's the big famous one the sister loves the book and really wanted to visit the small town too so that's why they end up there in particular which was really exciting for me because I am from North Carolina I'm not from Asheville in particular but I've spent a lot of time in Asheville and I love Asheville it's very near and dear to my heart so I love seeing a book set somewhere that is close to my heart which was really cool it's also cool because I've recently moved to not New York but Philadelphia which is a bigger city and so I can connect a lot to the character who has had the city experience the small town experience kind of opposite because she grew up in New York and loved the city and the small town was difficult for her and I'm kind of the opposite way there but just because of that I thought that was really cool and then when they go to the small town the main character Nora keeps bumping into this editor dude who she was previously met and they didn't really get along super well before because he's kind of grumpy but then they end up developing a romance together while they are there during the summer. From the complaints that I've seen about this book, people seem to not like the main character. They think she's like uptight, a bit too particular, hard to relate to. For me, that's super relatable. So I really liked her. I could definitely relate to her. This feels like a book that was like written for earth signs. So if you're like a type A earth sign type person, you may have a chance of liking this better. Like one of the traits that she really likes about the guy is that he's like a checklist dude so if you like a good checklist maybe you'll connect to this a little bit more i've also seen people saying it's like slow or boring or there's not a lot of plot which i can agree with i think the first half was definitely stronger than the second half it's definitely a slower book and it's kind of like what is the thing that's keeping us moving here and it seems like really kind of slow and dragged out but because i just love the characters so much because i just love their banter and connected to them that's really what i was interested in i was just there for the vibes like we could have no plot and i feel like i would have enjoyed it so that's why i loved it so much but i can see why people aren't loving it quite as much i still liked people we meet on vacation more than this one but it's still a five star for me because i just love the characters and i thought it was a good fun time so i will definitely still be picking up more from emily henry in the future i'm excited to see what she does next i need her to get going because i am just obsessed with her romances now and i need to read more of them i don't know if i'm as particularly interested in her backlist stuff that is more ya i think i'm probably gonna be interested more in the adult stuff but i just really love how her romances just feel so real they feel like they have real conflict with real adults making real adult decisions doing things in a real adult way they don't feel cheesy they don't feel overly tropey and i just really like that so i'm excited to see what she does next but that is it for all the books i read in the month of may i'm exhausted because i just read so many books and had so many to talk about this month but let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what you think about them let me know what your favorite read was in the month of may and if you want to leave an emoji down in the comments below to let me know that you got to the end of the video today let's do a book and a heart kind of comment combination for book lovers because this was my standout of the month and I would love to just see books and hearts all in the comments. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!